ever jump into a project like you know a DIY thing around the house and realize halfway through that you're missing like some essential tool or piece of information. Oh, all the time. Yeah, it's the worst. So today we're diving into how to avoid that in the world of learning. Sounds intriguing. We're talking about instructional design. It's basically like having a blueprint, but for knowledge. So being precise, right? Yeah. Not just throwing a bunch of information at people and hoping something sticks. Exactly. Imagine trying to build a house, right? But you're just eyeballing it. No blueprints, no plans, just winging it. Total chaos. Chaos. And that's where uh, our expert, Guy Wallace, comes in. Okay. He's a veteran in instructional design, and he's a big proponent of something called learner needs analysis. Have you heard of this? I have, yeah. Figuring out what someone needs to know before you even start creating the training program. Yes, like the prep work. Right. The foundation. Before you pick up a hammer or, in this case, I guess, a textbook. Precisely. Wallace uses this great example of a sales account representative. Now, you might think, okay, sales account representative, that's one job. He breaks it down into seven different areas of performance. Seven. Seven. So even a job that seems, you know, on the surface, pretty straightforward, there's all these, like, hidden complexities. Absolutely. I'm intrigued. Tell me more about these areas of performance. What are we talking about here? Think of them like the essential building blocks of a job. For a sales account representative, you've got things like um, identifying potential clients, managing your sales pipeline, negotiating contracts. You've got to build customer relationships. And each of these areas requires different skills, different knowledge, and they all have to work together seamlessly for someone to actually be successful in that role. You know, it reminds me when I tried to learn how to bake sourdough bread. Okay. I thought, okay, sourdough bread, it's flour, it's water, how hard can it be? But then you get into fermentation, kneading oh. techniques, proofing times. Like, it was way more involved than I initially thought. Way more. It's like, whoa. Exactly. That's exactly why this approach is so valuable. It helps us uncover those hidden complexities and ensure that we're not overlooking any crucial information when we're trying to learn something new, or even when we're designing training for others, for that matter. So, okay, you've broken down the job into these key areas of performance. What's the next step? How do you actually go about analyzing each area? Well, Wallace and his team, they don't just skim the surface. Right. They dive deep, creating these detailed charts and diagrams for each area of performance. And we're talking multiple pages, meticulously mapping out every little detail. Wow, no stone unturned. Exactly. That's intense. Because the goal is to understand not just what someone does, but how they do it mm. and what specific knowledge and skills they need to excel in that specific area. Okay, so you've got this incredibly detailed picture of each area of performance. What's the next step? in this like instructional design adventure? Well, now that we know what goes into each part of the job, we need to figure out what good looks like. Okay. And that's where we get into the really fascinating part, defining ideal performance. Ideal performance. <laughs> okay. Okay, I like the sound of that already. So how do you actually define what perfect looks like in each area? It feels like setting a really high bar, right? It is a high bar and that's intentional. It's about you know painting a picture of what's possible when someone has mastered all of the skills and knowledge for that area, kind of like a gold standard. Okay. Like I'm getting an image in my head of like the perfectly executed sales pitch, right? Closing the deal, everyone's high-fiving. But how do you actually like pin down that ideal in a way that's useful? It can't just be about celebrating wins. No, it's much more than just celebrating wins. It's about identifying all the essential elements of success. So for example, what specific outputs does this area of performance need to achieve? What tasks need to be done and in what order? what individual roles and responsibilities come into play, you're basically creating this detailed map of success. A map of success, I like that. But we all know that reality, it doesn't always match the ideal, right? No matter how well we plan. So how do we bridge that gap between what should be happening and what's actually happening? That is the question. That's where the uh, the real detective work comes in. That's where we get into gap analysis. Ooh, gap analysis. Okay. It sounds intense. Yeah. Play it on me. It's all about asking the right questions. And uh -huh. Guy Wallace, he's got a whole arsenal of them. Things like, um, what are the common roadblocks people hit in this area? Or uh, are, are there any steps in the process that consistently trip people up? What kind of information are people missing that's preventing them from being successful? Asking those really targeted questions. So it's like troubleshooting, but for like human performance. Right. It's yeah. like when your Wi-Fi isn't working and yeah. you have to go through that whole checklist. Like, is it plugged in? Have you tried turning it off and on again? Exactly. You have to systematically identify the problem areas. But here's what makes this approach so powerful. 
we don't just stop at identifying the problem. We dig deeper to figure out why the problem is happening in the first place. So it's not just about putting a Band-Aid on the symptoms. It's about getting to the root cause. Precisely. And sometimes what we discover is that the solution isn't more training, even though that's often like our first instinct. Interesting. Sometimes the issue lies with the process itself or the environment someone's working in. You're blowing my mind a little here. You're saying that sometimes training isn't the answer. Sometimes. Okay, so how do we figure out what the right solution actually is? Well, Wallace talks about three main categories of deficiency that can impact performance. He calls them DP, DE, and DK. DP, DE, and DK. It's like a secret code. What do those stand for? Help me out here. Think of them as clues. So DP, that stands for a deficiency in the process. Maybe the steps are unclear or there are bottlenecks that are slowing things down. DE, that stands for a deficiency in the environment. This could be anything from outdated tools to, um, you know, poor communication within a team. And then there's DK deficiency in knowledge or skills. And that's typically where training comes in. Okay. But you have to r rule out the process and the environment first. So it's like a triage system for performance problems. I like that. Yeah. First, you have to figure out what's causing the gap between the ideal performance and reality, right? Is it the process, the environment, or is it actually a lack of knowledge or skills? And then once you've identified the root cause, then you can determine the most effective solution. Exactly. And what's really fascinating is that addressing a DP or a DE, that often makes any training you do more effective. If you can streamline a clunky process, if you can give people better tools, they're going to be in a much better position to learn and apply new information. It's like clearing the obstacle so that learning can actually take root and flourish. This is all making so much sense, but we've been focusing a lot on like the doing part of a job, right? What about the yeah. knowing part? Like how do we ensure that someone has all the background information they need to be successful? That's an excellent point. And it leads us to another fascinating aspect of learner needs analysis. Knowledge mapping. Knowledge mapping. Knowledge mapping. Okay, you've officially piqued my curiosity. Tell me everything. Knowledge mapping. It sounds like we're about to like, create a treasure map, but for information instead of gold. Ooh, I like that analogy. Because in a way, that's exactly what we're doing. Uncovering those hidden gems of knowledge that are essential for success, mm -hmm. you know, in a particular job or a task. Okay. So walk me through it. How does knowledge mapping actually work? What's step one? Well, Guy Wallace, he talks about how there were actually 17 different categories of knowledge that someone might need to perform a job effectively. 17. Yeah, seriously. I can barely remember what I had for breakfast, let alone 17 categories of knowledge. Yeah, it sounds like a lot, I know, mm -hmm. but it just highlights how much more there is to learning than just the physical tasks, right? Or even right. the specific skills and fault. Right. We often overlook all the background information, the procedures, the policies, even just like the unspoken rules of a workplace that influence someone's ability to perform well. Okay, yeah, now that you mention it, I'm remembering this time I started a new job, I was completely overwhelmed. Just all the unwritten rules, the office politics. It took me forever to figure things out just by like observing everyone else. Exactly. And that's why knowledge mapping is so valuable. It helps us bring all those like hidden expectations and unspoken rules to the surface. Think about it. You might need to know things like... Um, company policies, industry regulations, how to use specific software, how to troubleshoot common problems. There's so much. It's like having that friend who knows all the insider tips and all the shortcuts. Yeah. Except in this case, it's all laid out in a clear, structured way. Exactly. But with 17 categories, where do you even begin to organize all of that information? That's where a really cool tool comes in, the knowledge slash skill matrix. Okay, a matrix. Now that sounds a little intimidating. Do I need to like brush up on my algebra to understand this? No, no, not at all. Imagine like a giant spreadsheet. Okay. Or even just a simple table. Mm -hmm. On one side, you have those 17 categories of knowledge we talked about. And then across the top, you have all your different areas of performance. The matrix simply shows you which knowledge areas are essential for each part of the job. Okay. It's a way to connect the knowing with doing. So it's like a roadmap that shows you exactly what someone needs to know to navigate each area of performance successfully. You got it. And to give you an idea of the scale this can reach, Wallace, he mentions a project he did for the Norfolk Naval Shipyard where they identified over 1,200 knowledge items. 1,200? That's insane. I can barely handle my to-do list, let alone 1,200 knowledge items. Well, it's important to remember that every project's different, right? Yeah. The point isn't to overwhelm people with information 
but to create a comprehensive resource that they can refer to. It's about providing clarity and structure, not creating information overload. So it's like having a detailed map, but you get to choose which path to explore based on what you need to learn at that moment. You don't have to like memorize the entire map before you even start the journey. Exactly. It's about empowering people with the right information at the right time. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. I feel like we've gone from corporate training programs to like baking sourdough bread to navigating the high seas of knowledge, all thanks to learner needs analysis. What's fascinating is that this approach can be applied in so many different contexts. Mm -hmm. It's not just for instructional designers in you know big corporations. It's a valuable tool for anyone who wants to learn or teach more effectively. So it's about being more intentional and analytical in our approach to learning, whether we're tackling like a, a new skill in our personal lives or we're designing a training program for our team at work. Absolutely. It's about taking the time to really understand what's required for success and then creating a roadmap to get there. I love that. A roadmap to success. That's something we can all get behind. Well, I don't know about you, but I am feeling inspired to take a closer look at my own learning process. What gaps can I identify? What knowledge do I need to acquire to reach that next level? Ooh, those are great questions to ask. And the answers, they might surprise you. I have a feeling they just might. Well, that's it for today's deep dive into the fascinating world of learner needs analysis. Until next time, happy learning, everyone. Mm -hmm.